Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Chewing the Fat with Roland Picker and Katie Trader. Uh, I want to welcome everybody who's here. We're going to catch up with everybody later on in the chat. Um, I want to thank my moderators that are here. I think there's only one. You'll notice that, uh, so get this, has been posting a thing up. I want to get this out before we do anything because we've got a lot of new subs coming in. We've got a lot of new people that are interested in the resale and are just seeing what's going on. So she's got this thing that she's posted up there. Welcome to the live stream. Please respect the host. No self-promotion using such words as sub, subscribe, etc. If you are new, turn on the bell and thumbs up. Exactly. Because this chewing the fat is going to get better and better this year. And the reason we do that, guys, we want you to go share the love with each other. We just don't want to clutter up the chat with a bunch of, hey, you know, come check out my channel. Hey, sub me. Hey, this, this, and that. Um, there's uh, shout out videos out there where you can go and get in those streams and do that. We want to keep the chat moving with questions for our guests when they're here. And we want to keep it safe and fun for all of you guys. But I do encourage you all to go over and if you've not seen anybody here and they're new, I encourage you, first of all, to go over, click those little three dots to the right of them, and it'll pop up and it'll tell you go chat, go to channel. It'll take you to the channel without removing your spot in the, uh, in the show here. And that way, just leave that tab up. You can go check them out, watch their videos, and subscribe. You know, subscribe to them and hit the bell. So with that said, um, I want to thank you all for being here. I got to tell you something. I, I have been bugging Dia for I don't know how long to get her to come on here. And finally, I broke her down. And I just used the mic charm, which was I just kept nagging and nagging and nagging until she said, I give. And she said, all right, I'll come on. So I have had her book now for like two, three weeks. And I'm so excited to have her because you guys, I know a lot of you know Dia, but those that don't know her, she's also uh, Immortal Hourglass on YouTube and on her uh, Posh Market, uh, Poshmark Closet and on her Instagram. And I don't know if she has Twitter. I think she has Twitter. And, yeah, I have uh, Twitter. Okay. And she's the same thing, Immortal Hourglass. And um, I have those links except for the Twitter. I'm sorry. I didn't get the Twitter. I have the links down in the description below. So you can go check those out during the show or after the show reloads, which Google does that for us. You can go ahead and check them out there. I encourage you guys to go check her out. Subscribe to her. Click the bell notification. She does great tutorial videos on taking pictures and how to set up displays and how to test for gold and silver. And she does a lot of uh, jewelry hall open openings, like on jarring boxes and jars. So I encourage you to, to use all the uh, things that are available for you in the description. Or if she types in and says hi, you can click on her uh, the three buttons and go there. So I'm going to turn this over to D. I'm going to put this on D and turn it off on me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then ask her the first question. Now, guys, I did put in there in the chat to use the at Roland Picker so it makes it red. And then ask your question because the chat can move kind of fast and then I might miss your question. And I want everybody that's got a question for Dia, I want you to have a chance to get it answered. Okay? So with that said, no further ado, here is the elusive, the beautiful Dia, Immortal Hourglass. How are you doing tonight? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you, Mike? I'm doing pretty good. You want to tell for any of the viewers that we've got that are just coming over that don't know you, who you are and what you're all about? Hi, my name is Dia. Um, my handle is Immortal Hourglass, and I, I sell jewelry. That's pretty much the only thing I actually do in my free time. Um, I go out and I source it, and I do the research to make sure I know what I got, and then I resell it. Um, right now, I only resell on... YouTube and on Poshmark. All righty. So those are the two venues that you use. Um, do you find, um, which one do you think does better for you? Um, because I know on eBay, you get a lot of, uh, I don't want to say it without being me. I don't want to pick on people, but you know, there's a lot of Chinese sellers that are over there and a lot of their jewelry, they do make some good stuff and then they make, we're going to run the mill, but they seem to flood eBay. Do you, do you do better on Posh maybe for the lack of seeing how that's just U.S.-based right now, which they are setting up in Canada, an office in Canada, but 
for now, do you find that that works better for you with maybe less competition than, you know, you know what I'm saying? On eBay, you can get lost. I think in the search I think and all what that. works better is having just different jewelry um, than something that's mass produced on a daily basis. Uh, I try not to go for anything that I think is actually mass produced. You can buy at your local Walmart. So, and taking good right. pictures, I, I advise taking good pictures. Yeah, and guys, she does have a good uh, picture video on how to set up with. Uh, Doing the suspended, what do you call it? The suspended pendant, pendant, or um, like yeah, the where it's floating like jewelry. Floating? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. pretty wicked, man. That's sick. It eliminates shadows and stuff like that. But a lot of people also want shadows, and I have a video on how to just take a white background that you still have a natural effect to it, as opposed to it dangling in the air. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? We got already got a question coming in here from Jennifer Peltier. She says, uh, can you recommend a gemstone or diamond tester, and is it necessary? Yes, I think it's necessary if you're reselling jewelry, and I would recommend a Presidium gem tester, and they also make a Moissanite diamond tester as well. All I don't right. have the link to drop it in there, but. Well, um, if you get me the links afterwards, I'll go ahead and put them in the description below, so you guys will know which ones either Dia uses or recommends. We'll go ahead and get that. Um, I'm not going to answer that yet. So get this, this, the, I'll answer that toward the end. I'll, I'll answer that question. That's for me. So I'm curious, and I'm sure a lot of people are curious because if any of you that know Dia and have gone to her posh closet, um, have seen some really stunning pieces and you've been watching her haul videos where she does get them. I know you do estate jewelry or you do estate sales. You go to estate sales. Um, yes. You want to explain a little bit about the estate sales because I've never been to one, so I don't even know how to approach it or how to, you, you know, can you kind of walk us through the process and what you recommend? Um, what I do when I go to estate sales, I look online. There is a website called www.estatesales.net, and you can type in your area code, and it gives you um, you can set the mileage for like around your area, and it will tell you which people are going to um, have an estate sale coming up. A lot of times the estate sales around here are actually just families instead of companies hosting them. So I try to wake up between, they normally start at eight. I wake up like four, five, six o'clock in the morning, normally at three, to be honest with you, because we live out in the middle of nowhere to be there at first in the line. And you carry on a conversation with the people. And I ask them if they have any jewelry and they'll be like, normally, sometimes, like, come on in, I'll show you what we got. And I normally just make an offer on all the jewelry that they have there. Um, in the winter time, I don't do that because there's not a lot of estate sales here in the winter time, nor yard sales. So I shop on www.shopgoodwill.com. So. So okay, so you do the yard, the the estates and stuff during the summer, but the um, the shop goodwill, you really can get some good stuff there. Um, depends on how deep your pockets is, as some people like to say. Um, you have to watch for it, um, know what you're looking for. A lot of people like to buy the bulk um, on Shop Goodwill, the stuff that says it's been untested or boxes of just brooches. I forget who the other day found um, a vintage Trifari in a box that was worth some pretty good money, and she paid like $75 for the box, so... You know, it's everything in life. It's a crapshoot. You never know what you're going to get. All right. Um, uniquely me, Tracy has a question for you. She says, is reselling your full-time job? Um, I, guess, I, I guess you would call it a full-time job, yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you like what you're doing, is it really a job? No, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't consider it a, a job. Maybe the inventory part's a task. All right. Um, oh, that question was for Dia. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't. But you know what? I have, I have, after Angie's, um, if any of you, I don't mean to uh, segue off of this, but if you were at her giveaway, it got, got crazy. And I got all that funny, funny talk on my brain, so I read the question wrong. So <laughs> here's the question for Dia. How did you come up with your YouTube name, Immortal Hourglass? 
Um, it's kind of like a daily reminder to me that that time is not immortal because I collect, um, well, I used to collect, I don't anymore have too many of them. I used to collect hourglasses and the time that it takes is immortal unless you break the hourglass. So every time I think of an hourglass, it reminds me that tomorrow might be my last day here on earth and not to take it for granted. So. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, Kathleen Merton has a question for you. How long before you went on YouTube were you selling and what made you come to YouTube? What? <laughs> okay. One at a time long, here. How, okay. How long before you went on YouTube were you selling? And the follow up uh, question is what made you come to YouTube? Well, I started YouTube at the end of 2018. I started reselling in 2017. I was collecting jewelry several years before that. I came to um, YouTube. I was on Facebook looking in Texas Gal Treasures. If you don't know her, her name is Margaret. And I was looking for something. I don't remember what it was, but she had recommended me one of her videos. And during her live stream, she was like, go sub to people you don't know and watch their videos. And somehow I ended up at somebody else's channel, then found y'all, and it just blossomed from there. Well, that's, uh, that's good advice. And that's what we encourage everybody to do here. When you see somebody new, you know, not everybody's a troll. You know, they're generally, generally good people. Um, I'm going to be waiting for some more questions to come in, but there is one thing I noticed you're wearing a cameo, and I know that we always butt heads on cameos because I'm a cameo lover myself. So you always usually find the good stuff before I get to it. Um, well, I was going to go to the que I was going to talk about the cameo, but I got a question. Kathy Valentine, our my sub from down under. Good day, Kathy. She says, "How did you you learn to take such great photos?" I got tired of taking um, ugly ones. Um, I don't consider no photo actually ugly, but um, I used to have an older um, smartphone and it would always take the grainiest photos and stuff. So I, I invested in a more expensive smartphone and I would used to take it like on colored scrapbook paper and stuff. And I didn't like how they would look because it would reflect the color a lot back onto the jewelry, especially if it was silver. So I started taking them on white and I just fell in love with the nice clean background where the focus is just on the jewelry instead of a mannequin or a whole bunch of stuff in the background. Because I try to go for what catches my eye when I'm shopping online for jewelry. And, and that's normally just a clean background. Yeah, and, 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 and guys, you got to watch her video on the uh, taking the photos because uh, I would have never thought of using a white plate some whiteboard and foil. And if you go over to her posh closet, click through the links that are in the description and go look. Um, I, uh, I'm amazed at how her photos and coming off of a regular smartphone. Now, are you going to be, I know you do the floating, the floating necklaces and most of the rings I see laying down. Are you going to ever try to get them to stand up? Like I see in some of these stock photos. Um, I actually took a lot of those standing up. I bought something called Museum Wax. I have no idea where it's at right now or to show you. Um, and it holds your jewelry up by itself, and you just edit out the, the wax for it to stand up. But it's too much work, so I was just like, just sit it on the plate and take the picture. I don't have time to edit like that for it to, to look quote-unquote professional. All right. Well, I'm still waiting for some questions to come in. I want to get into some jewelry finds. Do you have anything that you found at any of the state sales or you got any cameos you want to make me cry that I didn't find before you? Well, um, I have a few objects I picked up from people just like you. Matter of fact, I the first one is from you. I bought this from you, which I always wanted a belt buckle. And I got this one from you. Yeah, I remember that I, one. That's a cool buckle. I picked up this one from Shop Goodwill. Oh my, that's gorgeous! Is that uh, that's vintage for sure? I mean, you, any maker's mark on it? Um, I can't read it right offhand. I didn't even look. I opened the box and put it straight on. 
there's a, like a mark right here, but I can't read it without a loop. I did not bring that. And then I got this one from Barb going on Grumpy. Oh, that's cool. I thought she was different. She actually gifted that to me as a freebie when I bought some jewelry from her. Yeah. I picked this one up the other day. And is the, when you, okay, now you say you got that one at Shop Goodwill. When you go to Shop Goodwill, is that basically what you go for is just the, uh, no, just, you know, you don't go for just the, the cameos. I mean, are you all, I mean, I, from looking at your pictures, it's not your regular run of the mill stuff. So, I mean, there's, is there like a certain designer or a certain maker, you know, that you're, that um, you're looking for? Not necessarily. I just look for something that catches my eye that I think is different. Um, just uniqueness. Uh, I don't like a lot of, like, Selena's going to hate me. I don't like a lot of fake jewelry, like plastics. I don't like them because I don't, I think it's a waste of my time to clean it, to make sure it looks pristine, to look it up just for something I can't get much for. There's a lot that you can get a lot for that's plastic but i i don't want to do that so okay so but you wouldn't i'm a pass lazy up on, reseller <laughs> right but you you wouldn't pass up on um like like loose site would you or fake light no i i wouldn't if it was if it was cheap enough oh, okay if i got it at a yard seller or a state seller or something but that's not that's something i'm necessarily looking for you know um everybody has a forte and that's just not mine Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy's got a question for you. What's the favorite piece you've ever found? I'd not be interested in in that. Well, I don't have it sitting here. My husband found me a tourmaline gold ring, a 14 karat gold ring at an estate sale in a box of buttons. So that's been my favorite piece. Um, you can see it in some of my other videos. Uh, it's the big long square green one. Uh, that's my favorite piece. All right. Uh, Kathleen wants to know, do you do well enough for all the time it takes? Uh, I imagine that's like the source and the, and you don't really clean jewelry, do you? When you, when you go to put it up, you, you advise against that, don't you? Um, I don't clean my sterling silver. No, I'll clean the backs of the earrings or something, but I won't clean the whole entire thing because a lot of makers actually put that patina on them. So no. Okay, um, Jennifer wants I to know. I know more of a hobby than anything instead of a, I make enough that it covers what I buy and it covers any bills I have. But other than that, um, I don't consider it a, a job. So Not I've never actually fun. wrote down the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you're having fun, it's not, uh, it's never a job. Uh, Jennifer would like to know, do you have any secret places to research jewelry maker marks? I actually have a video up on called the best websites to research jewelry in the description below that video is a very extensive list of websites that I use on a daily basis. Right on. Uh, let me see if we've got any other questions in here. Okay. Kathy wants to know it's from Kathy Valentine. How much time do you spend each week on reselling? comma and youtube you don't so, want to know the answer to that we don't want to know the questions to that the answers to that the answer no <laughs> probably you spend more time on it than you need to like i do i yeah. spend more time on the yeah so i hope that answered your question there kathy uh uniquely me Tr uh, tracy says do you have a desire to branch out or stick to only one jewelry um I I started clothes. I have a room here in my house that has a whole bunch of clothes that are brand new with tags on that I was had the intentions of reselling, but it takes up too much room. And then I have to iron it. I have two cats and three dogs that I have to get the cat hair out of and the dog hair out of because I don't know if y'all if you've ever had a husky. 
that hair goes everywhere. And my dog is solid white. And no, it's just not something for me. It's uh, more of a task than I would like it to be. Um, I did sell several purses back in the, a few years ago, some Dooney and Burks um, and stuff, but I just never got into it. All right. Um, Margie says, and I know you've got the stuff to make jewelry, so I'm just going to ask this out. What's the most difficult jewelry you made? Have you ever made jewelry? Yes, Ian, no. Um, I, I don't really haven't gotten into it. I do have all the equipment, a lot of the equipment, not all of it, to um, make jewelry, but it's not something I'm into right now. Um, I have too much stock I need to move and too much other things that are more important to me right now than doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy's got another good question for you. Do you have a desire to branch out or stick to only jewelry? You just asked me that. Did I just ask you that? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm, I'm trolling back and forth. That's my bad. Well, guys, you know, on lives, <laughs> anything and everything can happen. Uh, maybe the question I is, the at this time, no. Yeah, maybe I didn't hear the answer. Um, okay, we did that. I'm going down the line here. I don't. Okay, Kathleen wants to know, if someone was to use this venue as an income of retirement, would you say it's worth it? I think she's talking about the selling of jewelry, you know, using the posh and the eBay. Do you think it would be uh, worth it? Well, I think it's worth it. Depends on how much knowledge you have before you want to start, especially if you're going to try to live off of it. I would suggest if you have a full-time job right now to start to tinker into it so maybe you can get the hang of what you're doing. I wouldn't suggest to anybody to quit their day job and pick up a, um, a hobby or a new job without knowing anything about it. Um, that's like if I was to quit doing jewelry tomorrow and wanted to be an underwater welder. I have no knowledge of that. Um, so that, that's fine. I, I wouldn't do it unless I knew what I was doing. Um, does that, that make sense? sense? It does to me. I um, wouldn't want, I want to advise somebody be like, oh, you can quit your job tomorrow and retire and just do this. Uh, Marigi says, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. I'm really bad with names. She wants to know, when did you know you wanted to do this? I actually never had the intentions of reselling jewelry my personal stock of jewelry got so overwhelming that i just had to stop buying and start selling it and then i got to the point that i could buy whatever i wanted when i um i saw something i liked when it came to jewelry while I was still selling stuff to pay for the ones that i kept mm -hmm. um you know uh, oh, I just saw a good, I thought I saw a good question here. This chat starting now, it's starting to move. Um, hang on. Hang on, guys. Let me catch up with the chat. You guys are moving so fast. Um, well, I guess it popped a question in my head to ask, because I, I, I know like with Lily, she likes the shiny stuff. So she gets all googly eyed over the jewelry. She's nine years old. When did you get the fascination with the jewelry? When's the earliest memory you had that might have, I mean, have you always liked jewelry? Have you always liked the bling bling, the shiny, the pretty, the cameo? I mean, what, when, when did you get started into this? At, at what age did you, you know, did somebody I don't give you know something? If it was, I don't know if it was the fact that my mom gave me and my, one of my sisters, I have more than one matching rings or the fact that my mom used to work, work at the Salvation Army and at Goodwill at one point in my life. And we used to dig through stuff. And my mom never wore a lot of jewelry. She, she wore about like six, she had like six rings that she would interchange all the time. And my mom never did makeup. My mom was never a girly girl. So I don't really know how it came about. So other than I thought it was beautiful. That's cool. Uh, Kathleen wants to know, do you like doing auction style? I guess, do you sell it when you sell your stuff? Do you, you, I would think, okay, auction would be where the bidding is, or do you just prefer somebody to say, 
well, this is what you're asking for. I'll give you that. I mean, of course, I know I like to buy it now all the time, but I mean, um, what works best for you or what do you like the best? I don't have a preference, to be honest, as long as it gets out of my house. Um, oh. I, I don't, I don't really, I, if it sells either way, if it doesn't sell with it, if it doesn't sell, I have no problem keeping it because I pick up stuff I would wear anyway. So. All right. Uh, any other questions in here? I'm trying to catch up with the chat. Um, I see a lot of new people, more new people coming in here. You guys, uh, you've got any questions for Dia? Let's get them in the uh, in the uh, in the chat so I can ask them. And if you see somebody you don't know, go check them out. We always want to help other people out with YouTube. Um, now, I know you're big on not just a presentation when you're selling, but I'm sure you're big on that presentation when you're shipping something. Is there a special way that you do, you know, like some people like to put rings in a ring box. Some people like to put bracelets in a bracelet box or a necklace box. Uh, some people like putting stuff in black little velvet bags and wrapping them in tissue and bows. And, you know, me, I just throw it in a box and pack and slip, say thank you and, Usually Angie catches that and says, no, dad, it ain't going out like that. You're doing it this way. So I don't do any shipping anymore. I mean, is um, do you like that presentation when they get it? They go like, oh, my God, I love this. I want to come back. I use bubble wrap and I've bought um, here recently because when I was still on Poshmark, I would just use the little boxes that they come with and bubble wrap it completely so you can even squish the box. Um, mm -hmm. I've started to buy... Um, those little poly Muller bags that are already bubble wrapped on the inside. And um, I have bought several little, those different size boxes, jewelry boxes. If it fits in there, then I'll, I'll tape it, make sure it doesn't fall out. They have the cotton inside of it. Then I'll put tissue paper or recycled paper or something like that around the box. So it doesn't move. Um, as I just say, as long as your stuff does not get shipped damaged, if they get it damaged, then you have a really bad problem with your packaging. Um, okay. Uh, Jennifer Hayes has a, uh, uh, well, I mean, we know about the jewelry thing, but she says, do you make your own jewelry to sell too? So, I mean, do you do any beading or, or anything I like that? Or No. Not yet? No, just no. <laughs> No. Okay. Are you ever going to make like the Dia design, the immortal hourglass design? I might make sterling silver jewelry um, in the future, but nowhere in, in the near future. Yeah. I mean, being a silversmith or a, a jewelry craftsman, uh, it, it takes a lot. And I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to do fine though. You're a very meticulous person. I know you, I know you kind of will. You're very meticulous. So I, I could imagine some of the cool pieces that would come out of that when you do that. Patsy Crafty Patricia has a question. She says, when you go to an estate, what is your favorite pieces you hope to find? Um, I don't know. I just grab whatever catches my eye. Um, there's nothing I'm actually looking for. Everything I'm, I was looking for, I have done found. So, um, including diamond rings and everything else. So there's nothing that I haven't found that I'm just like, oh, okay. I'm normally like, I think that will sell or that's pretty or if that doesn't sell, I'll keep it. Um, All right. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, like, I found sure James you, Avery, walk... I found David Uriman, I found several big name brands. I found Chanel and, um, Gucci and everything else it you know it doesn't it doesn't phase me anymore finding something that's different or what so, people have on their bucket list so so if you walked into an estate sale and you saw a table full of cameos and you off the glance you knew they were vintage you're telling me you wouldn't be doing the happy dance inside oh yeah i sure would but it's not something i go to an estate sale looking for oh okay 
Um, I'm just looking for jewelry in particular when I go to a state. So I don't, I think getting your, your hopes up getting there and then you don't find anything. Cause there's several times I've drone drove like over a hundred miles to go to a state sale and to find out that they sold all the jewelry the night before to somebody before the estate sale actually happened. So I learned with many years driving to estate sales and yard sales that I go there with the intention that I might not find anything and I'm in it for the joy of actually going there. And then I look at the vintage clothes and uh, I collect fur coats and um, I don't go there like, oh, I'm, I know I'm going to find jewelry today. I don't think that's the mindset to have. Because then you get discouraged really fast. Um, I don't list something right away online to sell with the with um, well, you're gonna find a whole bunch of jewelry or it's gonna sell right now because it have it at a good price. That's that's not how I how I do that. No, it makes sense. I mean and I mean I'd be pissed if somebody did the private sale before I got there. Of course, I'm not gonna lie, I've been in a lot of private sales before something Something happened, so I know there's an advantage to it. But uh, you're right, though. If you uh, you let it beat you up, you, you'll never do it again. So you'll never go. You never get out there. Nora A has a question. How? Uh, and I'm going to ask these questions. They're coming because I think she came in. They might have come in late. How did you learn to make such good photos of your jewelry? Um, uh, it was just um, it was just a learning curve. Um, I always I wipe my camera lens off. Every, between every single picture, just in case there's a speck of dust that could cause the lighting to get messed up, um, anything like that. Uh, I watched YouTube videos, you know, how to take floating jewelry pictures. I, I watched YouTube videos. I've been doing it for a year now, taking photos like that. Um, I get bored with a single style of photos. I used to take mine with confetti on the background. I got tired of looking at it every time I went to my Poshmark to share my jewelry so I wanted it to change and I started changing it. I haven't got done that yet because I've been busy. But it just No, I mean it makes you have to learn. Yeah. I mean I you guys her how I learned. <laughs> I just did. Well and her videos, she mentioned YouTube. You can learn anything on YouTube and her videos, I'm telling you right now, watch her videos on the how to set up for the shots, how to edit your thumbnails how to uh, test for silver with a gold testing kit. Um, all of those how-tos are very informative and you can learn from that. And, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention about that. There's a guy that Dia turned me on to. I'm not going to be able to pronounce his last name. His first name's Pablo. And this guy lives in Spain. And I wanted to learn more about gems and be able to look at something and go, Inside, I really feel that's real. So I've been binging on this guy's videos where he creates sapphire wedding rings and with double halo diamonds and he is a jeweler. He's this a guy master is amazing. And the angles and the lighting of his video shows you. You know, I'm learning a little more as I go, and you can learn that from anybody. I've I've watched other people cutting opals. I've watched other people cutting gems or just cutting. Silver, I mean, so Dia's, you know, Dia's videos are just as good at learning. So I encourage you to go over there and watch her videos. You know, I say if you're stuck in a bubble on YouTube or in life, you need to just branch out. Um, life's too short just to be stuck in one single little bubble with anything you do. Um, if you're just buying wholesale, try something new. It doesn't hurt to try. You never know who you're going to meet, you know? Like, um, if I would have never came to YouTube, I would never met you and Angie and Barb, you know? And uh, I just yeah. never would have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's right. And when you branch out, I have to agree with it. When you branch out, you end up making new friends. And they're going to turn you on. They'll know what you like. They'll say, hey, man, go check out this person. Go check out that person. And it's all about networking in a way, you know. So, that, you know, what? that's some good advice there, uh, Dia. Now, Velvet Sunflower, it's more, it's a question and a statement. First, a question. Dia, did you ever, oh, I'm going to read it all in one shot. You're going to like this. Did you ever think about being a hand model? You have beautiful hands. Um. Because you've been doing a lot of overhead. You've been doing a lot of overhead videos lately. 
haven't you? You've been doing a lot more overheads yeah. than you have straight on. So I got to agree with Velvet Sunflower here. Yeah. Uh, well, when I was younger, I modeled for a while, like, like full body model. Uh, it wasn't for me. Um, no. I don't even You're like taking pictures of my hands with jewelry on them. Okay. Um, hold on here. I'm going down to... Uh, Okay, guys, the chat, I bumped it, and now i got to scroll back up. Hang on. Barb is screaming, there is a question for you. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay, Kathleen wants to know, what's the best piece you found in a jar? In a jar? Yeah, like, did you ever buy a jewelry jar? I guess it's a jar because it says AR. Um, well, when you, when you find a jewelry jar in my neighborhood, please let me know. Um, Tennessee doesn't sell jewelry jars in their Goodwills. Okay, how about a jewelry? Oh, a jewelry bag. I bought a, well, actually, my husband bought it. He bought a box of jewelry. It was really heavy. I don't remember how heavy it was. We had to move it with a dolly into the house. Um, and there was all kinds of James Avery and stuff in it. And I think the coolest one I found was a um, James Avery charm bracelet that had so many charms on it that there was no link on top of the charm bracelet that didn't have one. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Right. Um, Mar Marija has another question. She says, uh, what do you want to achieve in life? Really? I think that's a valid question. I mean, for me, it's... What do I want to achieve in life? I think I've I've achieved what I wanted to. I achieved uh, not working for somebody. I don't work for anybody. Nobody has power over my life. Um, somebody can't lay me off. Even if um, the internet crashed tomorrow, I can always have a yard sale. I can always go to a flea market. Um, I think that was the biggest goal of mine when I was younger, to not work for somebody. Uh, I just... What I want to achieve in life. I'm already married to the man of my dreams, been married for going on seven years. Uh, there's not much I want. I can pick up and I can go wherever I want when I want. Um, You're living the dream. You know, I That's can go to doing. Tahiti tomorrow if I wanted to. Yeah. You're living so, the dream. And most people that are new in here don't know you, before you even did this, you used to do construction, didn't you? Yep. You used to build houses and do all that stuff, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You sure did. So, I bet she looks sexy in your uh, tool belt, huh? I didn't wear a tool belt. A real craftsman doesn't need one. You know where your oh, tools okay. at are at all times. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kathy Valentine wants to know, what was the most surprising thing you found? Surprising okay. thing? Well, yeah, I, I guess it would a be a Buddha shocker, with the yeah. Karma Sutra position underneath it once. That was pretty surprising. Oh I would God. show you, but it um, should not be on YouTube. Um, that, that surprised me because I was walking and I picked it up. I thought it was just a regular Buddha statue. I picked it up, flipped it upside down, and there was a little something, something going on the other side, if you know what I mean. Doing, doing the nasty? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we'll move right on to Nana's Treasures Hall. Peggy's question. Um, she says, how can you I tell? I bought it, by the way, just so well, you know. I, I've seen it. I, I know you bought it. Shocked the heck out of me. Um, Peggy wants to know, how can you tell that cameo earrings, cameo earrings are real or are vintage? Okay. Uh, well, a cameo could be vintage and fake, vintage and real. Um, depends on how you want to get into the vintage part. Um, this one's real here and it's vintage. This one right here is real and it's vintage. This cameo, I, um, I think the setting is modern and this is a real cameo. So um, real cameos are the easiest way to tell if it's a shell is by holding it up to any kind of light source. And do you see that glare right there? 
and you move it around and it kind of goes with the concave of the actually I'm going to show you this ring it moves with the yeah it's down you, you can kind of see the outline of the carving too yeah and you can see the light through it this light's actually the wrong way to, to demonstrate that um but you can zoom it in i don't know if this is going to zoom in or not and you that can see carved good. marks like right yeah. there around her face yes and you can see that it's you just tell a lot of jewelry goes with picking stuff up on a daily basis looking stuff up um i'm a really weird person i could do like 15 things at once uh, I could have like four videos running, talking to you on the phone or one of my other friends from YouTube and still be listening. I put my phone in um, accessibility mode and I can look up something online and put it in auto read and it will read the article to me. And I don't even have to read. It, it just reads it to me. So That's cool. That's cool. Um Peaches, Patricia, she wants to know, how do you store your fur coat collection? I store my fur coat collection in a um, cedar chest. Oh, actually, it's a cedar wardrobe over there. All right. And uh, Patsy Crabsey, the other Patricia wants to know, did you find a mink coat? If yes, what is a good name brand to look for? Um, I can tell if something's real, but just by looking at it um, now, since I have so many, I don't think they're, I don't look for name brands. Um, I don't think everything in life should be about a name brand. It's, if you like it, you should get it. You know, um, I don't think, I, I, I don't, I've never even sold one, so I couldn't even tell you uh, which one would be a good brand to pick up because I don't sell them. Um, uh -huh. I see if it's real, I smell it. I, that, that sounds really gross, but I want to make sure it's never been in a house fire or smells like because the animals you know some people's houses i've been to to buy um jewelry and, and fur coats and stuff that stunk like animal urine um, i make sure that it's in good condition and i just buy it all right silverhouse dacker has a question he says um, immortal do you save for your future yes um, that was to the point. Very good. Um, we'll move <laughs> right along. Uh, Sorry. Was, oh, no, I don't I know. Like I'm, I'm not elaborating no. on that. Yes. No, I like those. I like those quick answers. Um, we've got uh, Alice. I'm going to probably tear up your last name, Galler Gallerani. Did I say that right? Uh, she, they said you have done a great job sharing your photography tips. You have several videos that anyone wanting to improve their jewelry photos should watch. And we have talked about her videos, Alice, and that's a good point. Um, you guys, like I say, if you have, if you want to see what good photos look like for selling, um, go over to her Poshmark closet, click on the link, and go look at the stuff. I know a lot of people use multi backgrounds or take pictures outdoors. I've always thought anything other than either a black or a white background was distractive. Um, you know, but that's just me. So. Um, um, the, it's a flip side of the coin. When I'm shopping online, if it looks like a stock photo from China, I'm bypassing it automatically. So you don't want them to look like they just came from a magazine. You want them to just still look like you took them. But if I see something that has a whole bunch of like gemstones laying everywhere and a ring somewhere in the mix, or there's a whole bunch of tree branches or leaves or anything like that, I'm not interested in that. It looks like you don't care about your stuff. So I instantly bypass it i'm not gonna even give it two seconds of a thought uh i don't cat see any more tongue? questions huh that's a cat got more... tongue? well no i'm trying to look for some questions i mean i had a whole i had a bunch of questions but um you know all these all these other ones have been coming in have been really good um I guess I would ask you, is there going to be any point in time when you're just going to say, you know, I'm done with this? I mean, if you say you can do 15 things at once, do you think you'll lose that drive or that desire to keep doing the jewelry or what you're doing to go and finding that treasure 
mm. you know, selling it and all. Do you ever think you'll just put up your hands one day and go, you know what, I've had enough. Let's go get a taco and that's it, you know? No, because I think um, I think it's all about a treasure hunt, you know. Um, you never know what you're going to find. You you might wake up one morning and, and find something that looks like it came out of a gumball machine and it'd be a, 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 a real diamond and be huge, you know. It's, it's that moment I wake up every – Barb says someone said tacos – uh, I wake up every morning not knowing what tomorrow brings, and uh, I do know that I I inventory my stuff for how much I would like it to go for and how much it owes me and stuff like that, just in case I do croak off and die tomorrow. That I'm not I my hobby in my my job um, is not going to burden somebody that I love because I think that is the worst thing ever is to have all your stuff in one house and you have this big hoard and then it's burning somebody that you love. And then now what are they going to do with it? You know? So, um, I told my loved ones that if I croak off tomorrow, I have spreadsheets of how much everything is worth to me or how much I think I can get from it. Um, have an estate sale and take one third that price, you know, unless it's something that I wear all the time, then you better burn me with it type thing um i i think you know i'll keep doing it until i can't do it anymore and until then this is what it got i think if i get too old that i can't do it anymore i'll have my own before my death type sell and then go spend all the money i get at las vegas and half of it give it to charities you know what i mean i right on Oh, that's a good plan. Uh, Shamrock Pixie has a question, uh, and I know she uh, she came in a little later, and I think this one was asked, but there's a good follow-up to it. I am not sure if this was asked. Do you have a favorite piece of jewelry that you wear more than anything else? And is there a story behind why you love that piece besides your wedding ring? Um, the only thing that I, besides a wedding ring, the only thing I wear on a daily basis is this ring right here, and it's my wedding ring. Um, other than that, I have several different, uh, like, engagement-type rings that I change out frequently because I get tired of looking at the same thing over and over. Um, other than that, no. Um, the Mainly the bracelets that I like to wear that you'll see me wear all the time is, is cuff, um, like these vintage ones like this. Um, I have several of those, and I change them out, too, because I get tired of looking at them. Um, no. In the summertime, you'll see me wearing a whole bunch of turquoise. I won't wear uh, cameos and stuff like that. I'll wear sterling silver and turquoise and Native American jewelry or Mexican jewelry and Southwestern jewelry. Uh, uh, I collect um, vintage clothes and stuff like this one's a vintage top right here like i'll wear something um, like cameos or something with it in the summertime i have shorts on normally and a tank top and and sandals and i don't wear all this all right uh tracy has i think it's a question choke i find humor in it do you have kids or want them if so you can have mine lol do I have kids? No, I don't have kids. Do I want them? No. Well, that's to the point. We shall move on. And I don't want yours. I'm sorry. Love you, but no. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Barb says, I love you, Dia. She's shouting this in caps. Can I have it? I think she's talking about your spreadsheet and all the stuff when you go. Mm. No. <laughs> well, that's another quick answer. I like these quick answers. You can come, you can come down here, Barb, and... Uh, and raid my jewelry box, but you can't have it all. You know, Kathy uh, Valentine made a good point. She says, that's a great idea, Dia, planning ahead. You know, that spreadsheet, basically, even if you didn't have a real inventory system, like it's in bin this with this number, that number, and all, as long as they knew where everything was at, the spreadsheet is basically the roadmap. So that gives them the, the guide, would give anybody the guide to go in a certain direction and know what they're looking for. 
So, you know, that makes good sense. Uh, Ashley says, we love you, Dia. I love you, Ashley. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, and guys, If you don't know who she uh, is, please go support her. I'm so yeah. serious. Go click her name. If you wow. ain't subscribed to her, we can't be friends. That's how can I you feel about that. Can you, can you pronounce it? Because I always chop it No, up. I can't pronounce that. Please don't ask me. It's, it's, life, with an, it's life with ankle, ankle losing spondylitis. You guys, Ashley is an inspiration. I love her channel. I love her Patreon. I love the support group she's in. She and a few fellow other people that I follow that have the same uh, same disease. You guys go check her out. She's up. If you ever feel down and out, you feel like you want to throat punch your your spouse, your neighbor, kick the dog, go get a shot of upbeat. Go see. She is an her. inspiration, seriously, for someone in that much pain to be able to just even go to work or go wash her laundry. I'm like, yes. Yes, round of applause. Yeah, and she yeah, works at a school. Like, don't, don't talk to me no more. We ain't friends. Yeah, she works <laughs> at a school too. So, you know, she's got all the little kids, all the kids running around and screaming and everything. I mean, she's a remarkable woman. She's a remarkable uh, inspira uh, inspiration to what she's trying to do. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing more. She has the cutest son. She has oh, yeah, the cutest cool. son. Oh, my God, he's cute. And let me see what else we got here. Um, Kathy Valentine, that makes a good point. My kids have demanded I have directions for them when I'm dead. So they can send what's here to others who love the same stuff because they don't. Wow, that's cool. Well, what happened to me is why I started doing that. I went to an estate sale. I'm not trying to drag nobody's name through the mud or talk bad about them because if they ever see this video they're probably going to know I'm talking about them went in there and you could not walk in that house this woman had so much stuff and I stood there and I taught her daughter was around the same age I was and um, I think I was like 24 and she sat there and she was just crying in tears like I don't know what to do and uh, she did, there was so much stuff she couldn't have nothing priced uh, she needed the money for the burial and the funeral and stuff like this. And I'm, I'm telling you, no lie, you cannot walk in her house. It was just so much stuff everywhere. She was a collector of crystal and clocks and little figurines. You name it, that woman had it. She had shelves from floor to ceiling full of stuff. And I felt so bad for her because she didn't know what to do with that. And you can tell that it was such a burden to her that I could tell that if it came push comes to shove, she would have probably just burnt the whole house down. Um, wow. I wouldn't do that to anybody. Yeah, it's right. It's not fair to do that to somebody. And so Was she a hoarder? I don't know. Uh, she's, her, her daughter said that she was like a type of a reseller, but she didn't do it like online. She had some booths and stuff that she would sell at. Um, or she would have pop-up yard sales or whatever. She was more of a hoarder than anything. And it was a bad situation all the way around. And I felt really bad for her. And this girl was my age. And she had two kids that she had to chase around this estate sale. She didn't have enough money to pay somebody to come do the estate sale. Because down here in Tennessee, sometimes you have to put up a percentage of money before they come in there and then they'll come in and inventory it and she's like I had some guy come inventory and he said I had too much stuff that he didn't know what to do with it and um you know yeah my daughter's threatening me to get my stuff out of here before I cross the pearly gates no I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna let her deal with it um well guys if you guys got any, um, if you guys got any other questions for Dia, let's get them in. I know I've got to, I got to say, I've got the MSP auction at seven and I want to give everybody yeah. a chance to get something to eat, you know, and grab your libation so you can sit down. And that's a new word I learned. So if nobody knows what libation is, that means drink of choice. Mine's water. So you can uh, come to the, come to the auction and see what's going on. So. Um, let me see. I don't see any other questions. So if we don't have any, I'd like to kind of cut this short, if you don't mind, Dia, just to give everybody a chance to get something to eat. 
and Barbara's screaming tacos. Uh, Tracy, uh -oh. I, I'm on the auction tonight, Tracy. Roland Picker is selling. My daughter and my granddaughter have forced me to sell some of my collection again. So come on over, you guys, over there to Dwayne's. And I know Dia's going to be there. Uh, Peach has asked, Dia, would you be interested in showing some of your other collections? I'm sure you would do a video, wouldn't you? Show in or do a live and show some of your other stuff? I would, I would show some of my collection, but um, I could do like a sit down video and we're pre recorded because there's no way I'm taking it. YouTube all the way through my house. That's why, like, there's this here, and you can't see nothing else half the time, <laughs> because uh, like Granny Josie says, I live in a museum, so we'll leave it at that. Um, you got to show the Buddha. I can't show that on YouTube. That's terrible. You're not monetized yet. I don't care. I'm not going to have some little kids stumble upon that. It's terrible. No, sir. Look up Karma Sutra Buddha, Buddha statue, and you can look at it yourself. All right, all right, all right. I'll look it up myself. And I see uh, Hubby's in here, Mike. And, you know, before we go, i got to ask this one question, because I know, I know it's not like in this house, James and Angie are on the same page when it comes to the, the reselling, the thrifting, the hunt, getting it together. One does the online, one does the local sale better you know like the mm -hmm. facebook and the let go and i know some spouses just aren't interested in being involved is mike one of those non-participant or like say he goes out and he sees something does he call you and say hey dia i just saw this i think you might be interested in it um we no, never sorry. go to an estate sale or sell without one or the other um he collects stuff too um he does collect some type of jewelry uh like military pins and stuff like that. So, but he doesn't resell. He collects for, <clears throat> sorry, his own personal stuff. And, you know, he's interested in what am I, I'm interested in as long as it's not um, completely consuming my life. Um, there comes a point in one's um, life that you realize what's the most important and my husband's most important before anything else. And I set time off. I make sure because, you know, I don't have a boss that says, hey, you're off tomorrow. I have to constantly remind myself that, hey, take a break. Stop doing what you're doing. It's not that important. Um, you know. That's good. No, that's oh, and good. As long as I don't tell him too much, you know, about like, he'll be like, I don't really care. Like, I'll be like, oh, babe, this was made in such and such, such and such. Um, it's, it's worth this and it's this, this, this. And he's just like. You get that okay. glassed over look in his eyes when he. Like, yeah, he's like, I don't, I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever? I gotta ask because Angie's always uh, yelling. At me. Uh, Angie's always yelling at me. I got dad. You got it. We got to crack the the room. We have the crypt upstairs. It's another room that all the rooms are full of my stuff. And it's like dad, you got to start get rid of this stuff. Does he ever just wake up one morning, stub his toe, and go, Dia, it's time no. to sell it? No, I Never. make sure all my stuff's in drawers and uh, no. I tell him that, but you know, that's a different subject and what I'm not talking about. But <laughs> I do, I have told him that before, like, mm -mm. but you know, I try to have everything where it needs, it has a house. Everything has a house. So it lives in out of the way. Yep. Um, it's a mic. Yeah. You saw the question. Cause I was mm -hmm. looking to see, is she wearing another cameo that I didn't see or something? You know, oh, it's, it's your your Bluetooth. No, your she's asking about the black thing around your neck. That's your yeah, it's uh, Bluetooth. That's your Bluetooth headphone. Uh, Barb says thank you, Dia. For Barbara says thank you, Dia, for sharing so much information with us. I have learned so much from you and your channel. Uh, CT says that's me. I work. I I would work at jewelry all the time if I didn't tell myself to take some time off. Um. And. Darlene's telling me she'll see me there at the MSP. So with What's that, guys, oh, it's at seven. So we've got an hour. Okay. So I do want to. Uh, I want to shout out some people that came in the chat while they were here. Ahead. If you don't mind, you go ahead and do that. And, um, 
Nero Trigger came in. I think that's how you pronounce that. Oh, did did Nero Trigger come in here? I didn't see him. He did. And Farmall came in, and especially my Ashley, please go support her. I would I would so appreciate that. She is a an amazing woman. Um, Farmall Farmall fanatic. You guys need to go check him out. He lives in Pennsylvania. He's just down below, I guess, Lake Erie or wherever he says he was at the last video I was in. But he actually uh, does these live videos where he's like plowing the field or he, the one where he ate the yellow snow, which is a very, yeah. very interesting one. You need to go watch this. He's, he's pretty, go, pretty go cool guy. Go out, you know. Go watch different people. Clear your yeah. mind. <laughs> Just yeah, and I'll put that link to that Pablo guy in the description after the video loads up so you guys can go see and maybe learn through different light or whatever, whether or not, you know, you can just kind of get that feeling. Hey, I got a real gem here. I don't just have a piece of glass, you know, mm -hmm. just like how Dia was telling you to hold the camera up to the light. And she's right. If you hold it up to the light or near the light and you look at the backside, you will see the outline of the carving. And if you look close enough, you'll see the marks from the uh from the carver we're doing the mm -hmm. carving now that doesn't take away from this is what you've learned it doesn't take away from any of the uh, fake ones because there's some resin ones that are, are worth some money they use other yeah. media they use mother of pearl cameos are cut on mother of pearl stones marble agates they uh, they use all kinds of different media so they're all valuable yeah. um some kind they're not trash don't throw them away um do your research, you know. Um, we have, it's it's 2000, what, 19? There's something called internet, people. Look up your stuff, you know. Just look it up. That's yeah. right. One little, one little, you could type in vintage cameo. And you know how many articles come up? Um, you could type in gold tone silver trifari necklace and boom. Just... Do your research. Thank you, Barb, for putting that up. Going on Grumpy put up uh, Pablo Samadavilla. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, channel. Go check He's him out, guys. He's an amazing artist. If, if you want to learn about gems and how, and how stuff's done, um, I encourage you. And like Dia says, step outside the box. Go check other people out. Watch other videos. Expand your brain. You'd be surprised, man. There's that person out there, home. right? There's that person out there that knows, hey, this is how I store minks or I store fur coats. Somebody else might have another different way. You know, I learned if you want to get odor out of clothes that you're sewing, you spray them down with a mixture of vodka and water mm -hmm. or just vodka. It doesn't stain the clothes and it takes the odor away. So, and I learned that on a video on YouTube of all places. So, you know, and I want to thank, uh, uh, everybody, uh, first of all, you got any last words and nuggets before I close out? Do something you, know, you love and not something you think you have to do. Oh, that is so good. I'm going to make that into a t-shirt. Definitely. I'm making that into a t-shirt, man. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you what, folks. With that said, I want to thank every one of you that came here today. All my subs, all my new subs, all my old subs, all my medium subs, everybody in between. I'm glad that you, that you could make it. Um, I'm glad we had a chance to get a shout out to a few of you. Uh, I'm going to try to do shout outs on a, on a regular basis um, as I learn other channels and I learn other things. I think Dia would agree with me. It's just to help everybody, you know, get your brain expanded and, uh, and learn something new. And I want to thank you all for being here. Every one of you, I appreciate you all. You mean something to me. Um, with that said, if you've got any uh, further questions or you want to make any comments, you can leave them down below after the reload pops up. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Bring that, little, click that little bell because I do do lives twice, twice a week. I do a jewelry auction call on Fridays at 5 p.m. Central, and I do the Chew the Fat with Roland Picker. If you guys know anybody that might be interested in being interviewed and or would like to auction some of their stuff off, um, you can have them click the contact e uh, email in the description, ask Mike at Yahoo dot com to get a hold of me and just have them reference hey so and so sent me saw your video and we'll take care of them that way um as always guys i ask god to bless each and every one of you i want him to prosper you like he's prospered me in my life i want him to give you great health happy family happy life 
and just enjoy it guys you know go out there spread your wings man find some new stuff to watch i mean i watched a guy eat yellow snow it's crazy <laughs> and i had a ball man i had a ball and it reminded me of of my of my life in the past and some stuff and i love farmall fanatic he's great and ashley especially love ashley but i love y'all and we're going to give everybody a shout out we'll do it we'll do it in the next in the next video the chewing a fat i think we'll use this format this platform to do that so i appreciate it and thank you angie for putting that email in there for me so with that said guys i'm gonna say i'll see you all in the next video roll and pick her out bye bye bye